um, white satin just as a, as a freebie, but you won't be using white satin, not very flexible for the skaters. Um, but you will be, this will be the actual material you use for the tops, the singlets, it's a sports mesh. And this is probably the one you might want to do, you can use the satin to experiment on in your trials, because it's quite cheap, isn't it? Yeah. Not the yeah, princess yeah. satin, but this one's quite cheap. Yes. Can you remember off the top of your head how much it was? No, but I can go. Okay. Because yeah. this one was... $10.40. This one was $10.40 a metre. $40. Something. And then this one's cheaper. Yeah. The Lycra, which isn't here... $23. The Lycra that you'll be using for the legging is more expensive. So you may as well just test on the cheaper white fabric and save the um, more expensive Lycra for, for the actual... Um, designs yeah so that's the actual sports mesh that you'll be using and um, when you're doing these trials and these experiments we've cut this to a four for you for the experiment that you're going to do today but you can cut it down smaller or you know just to get the most out of it, it doesn't have to be a four size it's just mm -hmm. the size that you cut it to be aware that um, when you um, use the plan drawers and don't kind of damage them because as I was saying this process is really sensitive and you might want to do a big screen open screen of flat colour if this paper's got dints in it that colour's not going to print onto the dint so mm -hmm. when you come to wanting to do that you know if you do want to screen print that flat blocks of coloured paper to get this sort of look if your paper's got any crimps in it it's going to affect your print a little bit so just try and keep it flat and look after it do you have a question? Um, yeah, what paper was that again? It's just regular printed paper? This is the sublimate paper that you gotcha. got in your pack, and we sell it for like a dollar a sheet or something. The, it was 140. 140 so sheet for the big AOs. Yeah. But as I was saying, you can experiment with all different sorts of paper. This stuff's just specifically designed for this process, but feel free to try other types. Thank you. <laughs> um, cool. So, I'll just quickly talk through this stuff. This is showing you the kind of process about, ideally, these three colours, as they say, these are the colours that they use in printing magazine images. And when you look through, you saw those Bende dots, that when they overlap, they create the photographic image. This is a kind of basic screen printing image. The three colours overlaid should make a black. It's not quite a black to my eye, but let's just pretend that that's pure black. I know it's more of a kind of a dark property brown, but let's just say it's black, because in theory it should be. Um, so these are the three, the cyan, the magenta, and the yellow, and the black where they overlay. Um, you've also got the black in your, in your bottle. And so you can see that as they overlay, they make, they make different colors. So these are all these bright lurid colors straight out of the pot, and they've been put onto paper and just overlaid to get different kind of colors happening. So you can see that you can get those really nice kind of colors third colours created through, through overlay. This, this example here I put up just to show you that it is an exhaust process. As I was saying, when these come out of the pot, they're at their the strongest, 100% kind of strength. So they go on for quite a while. If you were wanting to mix a certain colour and you've extended the green, because this is what you will be doing in this project, you'll be going, okay, this colour is going to be great in my design, I'm going to mix my colour up for that. Because it's already so diluted, you won't be able to get multiple prints from that colour, it'll just disappear. It might disappear, it might only work for one print. But if you were working in straight colours from the pot, which I don't think any of you will be, you could perhaps get, you know, a number of prints out of it. Mm -hmm. And you'll see that each of the colours is a little bit different in its longevity as well. So the yellow pretty much remains unchanged after 10 repeat prints of that same piece of paper, whereas the black and the blue, the blue especially drops, drops out. Um, these prints, as I said, they're permanently in there, they're not going to wash out, they're not going to run. Um, they're applied in two different ways, so today um, you're going to be using both the water, can you get the manatex out of the bridge for the paper? So you're going to be using just black. We're going to just start off with an exercise, and we're going to do this exercise where you're going to just to play with the light and dark, and how far can we extend it? And so one exercise you're going to do, diluting the black ink with manutex, which is a 
they can kind of paste. Are you deliberate? Yeah, I yeah. deliberate. So you cool. Yeah. yeah. And one's going to be diluting with water, and just to see, to get a hands-on kind of experience of the different consistencies and how much water you need to add to get the colour change. So what you guys should be kind of starting to think about sourcing is the next session we're going to be, soon we're going to be moving into a class focus. Today we're just focusing on light and dark and your, your independence is going to be to do one of these. Um, then the following session we're going to be looking at um, mark making and, and different marks and stuff. So start just keeping your eyes open for different mark making utensils. That doesn't mean going out and buying a $50 sable head brush from Gordon Harris because they don't do that. But you can, you know, just get scabby old brushes, um, cheap foam thingies. Remember that hair net, you know, maybe there's stuff like this. Interesting kind of things that might be a good resist. Um, just just think outside the square of stuff that, oops, it's heaps of stuff lying around here you could use. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a free bag of materials behind that dark screen down there, free materials area. Have a look through that. But just get together yourself some a range of mark making material. I've also got, which I that can give you a whole lot of um, film canisters, which we'll use once we start mixing up colour and you want to actually store it. So that's something to just start collecting and putting in a box to bring is um, some mark making materials. You will also need a glue stick um, and I would suggest some small thin bristle brushes. So it's the mark making materials, so they all have to be synthetic or can it be... It can be anything. Okay. Yeah. The, they, they just to apply the, the material to the paper. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so here's, here's some nice examples just I pulled out of a student's workbook showing some of the... the um, oh, here's an example of like that, you know, the supplement ink. Not on the paper you've got, but just on a handy towel. Yeah? Feel free to look through these, and that's just what's come out. So you can actually see a little bit of the grain. Um, just different. So mark making is one thing we're going to do. So that's why it'd be good just to get some different tools and experiments so you can do with that. So this is with the paint being really watery, yeah? The ink being really watery. You can do lots of cool stuff. This one here's a nice example of what you can do when you thickened it with Manutex. So if any of you have ever done print making when you're using a roller, we've also got, um, which we will get out, Actually, we should get them out now. The um, Perspex sheets. You can put your ink on that that's thickened with the Manutex and treat it like a printmaker's paste, you know, and ink up surfaces so that you can press the paper onto them. So the students did some lovely kind of monoprints, ripping up some corrugated cardboard, cutting it, making it into stencil, inking it up, and doing some really cool stuff. Inking up some paper and just scratching into it. So feel free to kind of look through that but yeah an understanding of that it's wet applied wet as in a paint in, in their palette that you've got because they've got these in their pack eh? you've got smaller ones smaller yeah. ones of those yeah. in the pack that you'll be using yeah. to mix colour or you'll be mixing colour through overlaying the paper I recommend you getting a folder and just using it to store all your papers in I've kind of done this and I've just got Put all the bits of paper in because you can reuse some of them. And I just store all my bits of paper and, and it just helps to keep it. Well, it doesn't actually keep it very organised because they're not in the right folders <laughs> anymore. My organisation has slipped, but once upon a time it was very organised and the right pieces were the right thing. Um, but yeah, so you might want to get yourself a folder just to put these little bits of paper into. Um, and so the other way that you do it, if you're not mixing it up and using it in a very painterly way, is you can, this piece, this colour here, if you want to get that flat effect, one way is we just get in a screen, it's in a screen like this, but it's just a blank screen, an empty screen, and we run the ink through the screen, and then that gives us a very nice flat um, surface. So you've got some, some flat coloured paper like that, and then of course you can do things with it. This simple test of just cutting it and making a paper pattern and then pressing it, yeah? Um, of course you can do lots of things with your paper. You can screen print it with various imagery. 
We've got a whole class full of paper processing techniques because there's heaps of really cool things you can do with the paper. But again, just to show you with this example, this is just screen printed paper. So just some red put through an empty screen and blue and yellow put through an empty screen to get it nice and flat. You could just paint it directly onto the paper if you wanted the brush strokes, but if you wanted it dead flat, put through the screen. Um, and then this is actually a screen printed grid, a pattern screen printed onto it. Just ripped and collaged. You can see it comes out pretty much as it comes out. And you get the beautiful kind of things with like the torn ripped edges and things like that, which is really nice. And because these are, again, those straight, pretty bright, full on colours out of the pot, you've got another print out of it that's quite close, hasn't deteriorated much. And added to that, of course, we've got the digital printer now, so you can be, this is all just kind of um, print on print, like photograph on photograph, but there's heaps of really exciting potential to take the digital printed stuff and combine it with some of the painterly stuff as well, yeah? So you're digitally printing the imagery on the digital printer, sticking it, cu cutting it up into whatever you want, sticking it down onto the paper and pressing it onto the photo. So this is kind of the most, the more, you know, these inks are most commonly used in this situation, but I don't know if anyone else is still screen printing them and painting them on by hand. I think we're one of the few institutes that are still buying the ink in the bottles. So it's kind of nice to be able to still have this very hands-on, expressive way to be able to use the, the material, yeah? So you're getting a sense.